Hey everyone, this is a game review of our team's game, Through the Lens. So, this is going to be a review and partly post-mortem, I guess, of the game as well. So, I'm going to try to follow the format that I used on the other games as well. So, I'm going to start off on the itch page. I'm going to go through the game, uh, just kind of talk through what I did, uh, what the team members did, uh, what we did well, what we did wrong or badly so just overall try to give a full-on review of what we did and just get a retrospective of the entire experience so through the lens a world where everything is always beautiful or is it so this is a click and point adventure uh, featuring uh, voice acting original music and gorgeous art can you solve the mystery and obtain the real ending? There are four possible endings depending on the number of jewels collected. There is a little spoiler here for the actual dialogue in the game. So if you have a hard time hearing the dialogue, you can just come back here and read the main story points. <clears throat> the credits, uh, we have a team member, Eric. He was the music lead fantastic job of keeping everyone organized he was the first sound effects team member that we had on the team and he really pulled everything together got everything organized sound bites ready and listed out for what we needed and he did a great job making that happen then we had jess foley they were one of the uh, 2d artists they were <clears throat> the secondary after effects on a lot of our images and then they also made a couple extra art assets for us great work great person to work with everyone on this team has been phenomenal to work with actually this is a great team and wouldn't mind working with all these people again everyone on this list i've never actually met in person we all met on discord all around the world so pretty crazy experience to just meet strangers and then make something beautiful like this game so i'm i'm glad that uh that we all met and hopefully we keep on rocking together eventually so uh, anyways Jess was great as an artist and really big asset to the team Daniel uh, Hudson he was with a 3d artist who created an amazing rendering uh, of a 3d camera for us made from scratch and did the texturing all himself fantastic work he's an amazing 3d artist definitely check out his work and then uh, Seb Bolton he was the uh, sound member that I've worked with a couple times already. He does very, very good work, very amazing work. And he also is pretty much the F mod guru, at least that's what I call him. He really knows what he's doing with it. He knows how to integrate it into Unity very well. He knows how to make sure Git Hub uses it correctly and gets pushed through and doesn't screw anything up. And he also knows how to set up all the events to be used inside Unity very nicely. So without his help, things would have been a very big struggle. He came in later in the week and just really helped get us back on track with the FMOD situation. So really big kudos to him for helping out with that situation. Uh, Shi Yi Yen, she was the artist lead. I worked with her a couple times and she always does just brilliant work for 2D art. She does other art as well. I believe she does 3D modeling and stuff. Uh, but her 2D art is just beyond amazing. And she really knows how to capture the aesthetic of what we need. And usually given very little direction of what's actually going on. I just give her rough sketches of the level design that I'm looking for. And then she can just pop amazing stuff out. So really check out her work as well. I mean, everyone just does great work on this team so again I'm proud to be a part of this team and then we have Alessandra here uh, she was music sound effects and the voiceover for the main character so she really knocked it out of the park with the voiceover so really big shout out to her for stepping up and doing that she did it all on the last day of the game jam and made it happen so that was really big thanks to her for doing that and then there's me so funk the team lead and programmer. The structure that we had was I wanted to set it up so 
there was a sound person who was kind of in charge of all the sounds and was able to delegate work out accordingly to that. So I didn't have to fully focus on organizing that side of things. And then the same thing with art, I had she be the art lead and she did the exact same thing. Both of those guys organized everything. So they listed the assets they needed and then just really got everything in line for us to be able to knock it out of the park at the very last big crunch time of the game jam like we always do <laughs> so enough rambling uh i'm sure you all are waiting to see what the game is actually like and what i think of the game so first thing you see is the mouse is in the center of the screen you can kind of see that it's all black around and then you get this little snippet of something big old title through the lens just to know what's going on and then you have a button on the screen so typically a button on the screen means you need to move your mouse and look at the start button so you start moving your mouse and then boom you're starting to reveal more image in the background this was done purposely it was to help create an intuitive uh, idea of the gift to the player of hey this is going to be one of the mechanics of the game you're going to be using this sprite masking effect to help you further the game at some point. So right now it's just revealing this amazing image that was done by Shi Yi. So let's hit start and then boom. Something else that you might notice is the mouse cursor was white and then you hover over an object and turns blue. So that's also more feedback to the player to know that something is happening when you hover your mouse over an object. And of course, just a little blood splatter on the sprite just to give you a little more polish and a little more pop to the game. Boom. Then you get some sound effects starting. It was nice and silent. This was to kind of give you the idea that, hey, this game isn't going to be what it seems right off the bat. It's going to be a little startling. Got some creepy music going. Again, this was done by Eric. He just really knew the aesthetic of what we were going for. He just, again, killed it. So three big buttons, uh, quit, and if you hover over it, you see it turns red, so you know something that isn't good, quitting the game, turns red. You hover over the play button, oh, now it turns green, so you know that's going to be like a key item, or the good button. And then you hover over credits, well, credits is kind of informational, a little bit of an explanation, so once you click on that, takes you to the credits. So now you know you got feedback, hey, this is explanation. Uh, this is just the credits, by the way. Go back to the main. If you go back to the main again, you see, hey, look, it's blue again. So kind of teaching the player the different types of colors, uh, trying to do it in an intuitive way without just shoving it in your face saying, hey, this is what you need to do. So let's hit the play button. Here is the first big jump scare type thing. If you're on the Windows machine, you're going to be like freaking out like, oh no, all my apps are going to be removed. You try to click cancel, you're going to get all the Windows dings. Well, it doesn't work. You just have to go for it and hit next. And there we go. The game starts. So that was just kind of a little mind teaser to tell you, hey, this game isn't what it seems. So warning graphic content. There is a little bit of imagery in the game that might be disturbing the people, so we have to put this in here. And of course, we give you the option to quit out of the game if this is a problem for you. And then we have continue when you're ready to go. Dear Grandmother, look through the lens to unmask the truth of this world. Come to my mansion to help prevent the blindness that plagues this society. So we just wanted to have a little bit of a story element to the game. I mean, I wrote a very long story for this game, for the game jam, and we based it off of that story to make things happen. But of course, things had to get truncated for the game jam. It was only a week to do everything. But a little bit of an introduction. You know, you came, you came to this mansion because of your grandfather and he's telling you look through the lens so now you know what you're actually looking at for the mouse cursor and again and when you move your mouse around you see in different colors so, oh, now you got your first graphic imagery so that's something that you want to pay attention to so you can do things in certain orders to make sure you hear all the dialogue lines so like if you look up at the sky the sky always looks beautiful 
but this camera. So you can do things like that, like blue. Nothing major happens. It's just an explanation. So she's just making a remark. Oh, this guy always looks beautiful until I actually look through the camera and oh my god, everything is gross, spooky. If I click on the. The gate is locked. I wonder if there's a key around here. So we wanted to be able to point the player in the right direction. Uh, we're kind of spooed fed the players on this first screen just to kind of help along that hey, if you click on this uh, nothing's going to happen but there is a way to make something happen so you might look over here grab the key I hope I'm just seeing things and I hope you are just seeing things hopefully it's not a real dead dog <laughs> but if you grab the key and then you go straight to this gate you actually lose out on an object. So you want to make sure you're thorough looking through on these point and click adventure games. So hovering over this, you see this little medallion type thing. These jewels are the keys to your success. So those are the jewels that the uh, itch page actually talks about. So this is what's going to help determine what ending you get. There's four endings. So if you skip all jewels, you'll get the worst ending. One is a meh ending. Two is kind of a sad ending that you complete your task but you also have a sad ending and then finally three is your best ending so let's go into the gate so right away more beautiful art but oof, just horrible horrible situation right in front of you someone's hanging I need something to cut that rope so you can tell that they're holding the key so you just kind of look around, and you get arrow options on the, on the bottom of the screen, so hover over, you get blue, so you know that this is going to be more like an explanation or like an exploratory at this point. Green, saying that this is a key item, so something has to be done. Uh, again, here's another jewel. This poor man. It looks like he was trying to protect something. And. The artwork is just mind-blowing to me because she did the main beautiful version and then just came in and then uglified everything, made everything look gross and broken down. And the effect is just amazing because everything was so line well lined up and all done in such a short amount of time that it was just fantastic. So let's go up the stairs. So you can hear that nice calm music in the background. We actually wanted to go with like a Resident Evil save room feel. Uh, we were going to try to incorporate like scary music when you hover over certain objects and everything and blend the two. Just didn't have the time to make it happen. The music was created, we just didn't have time to actually implement it into the game. I need something to cut that rope. So you do have voice lines for this, even though you don't have anything to cut it, you still get voice lines. Uh, so you can just look around, nothing over here, but oh, what's up here? I better not. I'm really afraid of heights. So just little things to help add an extra polish to the game. It might not feel like it's needed, but at the same time you have it there and it just makes it feel a little more worthwhile. So let's go forward then, I guess. So now we're just in this little room. I need a key code. So now we need a key code, we know. So we got a letter, letter laying on the ground. <gasps> Dr. Fredericks, I can't believe we've been living a life like this, forced to make everyone follow suit like a rat in a cage, only seeing what we want them to. I know the condition our world is in. It's just, I'm sorry. <laughs> so again, we wanted to make the game feel uneasy. Always keep the player on their toes. You get a little bit of leeway for the first two areas and then boom you get that little bit of like a jump scare almost we try not to do too loud of a noise because scaring people just off a of noise kind of just kind of ruins things for people so we wanted to keep it a low noise but just a quick flash image of a spooky enemy uh, it was originally going to be an enemy that you had to use the camera to defeat but due to time constraints we just left it as like a little jump scare and you 
you'd also hear a story going off. Um, that's where the dialogue issues were coming into play. Didn't have enough time to mix the audio levels fully. Uh, by the time I got that implemented in, you know, there was only 30 minute or like 40 minutes left in the game jam deadline. So had to get it done, had to push it. So we had that. So we got a letter, we got some stories. So we'll go to the next one. So now we have just more crazy art. I mean, these guys made art inside of art. I mean, it, it just blows my mind what they were able to do. So creepy imagery in the background. Dead butterfly. Woman with a skull. These pictures are just terrifying. So you can look around the room. You find another letter. We drafted another book that says that the Virgin of Stone have proven successful. It puts everyone into it. They have no idea what their surroundings are like. Now we just need to be able to spread this to everyone in the world. I just know we won't last long without this. Okay, so more story. And then you just keep looking around. And here's a key item that's on the bookcase. What's this got to do? This bookcase looks like it's been moved a lot. So now we have a door back here. We can't do anything with it yet. It's not going to last anything. This document says, Fredericks keeps forgetting the key code. It is 362. One of the uh, big plans for this computer was you, you would click on it and then it would zoom up to like an actual computer screen. You'd have documents on it that you'd have to click and then find the key code. And it'd be a randomly generated key code and then you'd have to input it into the keypad. We didn't have enough time to implement that in, so sadly that had to be cut. But I still think this works well enough. I mean, it's just a game jam. It's a pretty much a five minute game if you just play normally. So, uh, again, I think that works out perfectly well. <laughs> so now we go to put in the key code, but it just takes you straight to the room. It would have been nice to be able to get that keypad interface in there. Just couldn't get it to happen though. So now you start looking around this room, everything's broken down, and oh, what's on this table? Uh, creepy guy. But look, looks like a knife, right? This knife looks useful. So now we have a knife. That was another thing that we would have wanted to add to the game. Didn't do was add like an inventory slot or something to show you what you have available to you to use. That way it would help cut down even more confusion. It's a very short game right now, so you can remember pretty much everything you have, but again, it's always nice to have that secondary helpful item for your players. What is this thing? So some more voice lines. Not needed, but it helps. I mean, if you walked in a room like this, you're gonna be like, what the heck is this? <laughs> Alright, here's a box. Oh my god. <laughs> So, again, you have a little more time. We're able to calm down a little bit from the previous images of jump scares, and then boom, we got another one. So that's where the last gym is going to be. So let's back out of here. Now we have the key, or the uh, knife. That should do it. Okay, so let's go. And then we were going to add a body slumped on the ground next to it, but we didn't have time to create the art asset, so we just put the key. That should do it. So you pick up the key, and now if you leave the room and then start going back to it, uh, sometimes the key actually shows up, so you go back. So if you go upstairs and come back down, the sprite shows back up. It doesn't stop you from uh, completing the game, it's just one of those bugs that forgot the fix. Uh, so we just go to where we need to go now. We know we have to move that bookcase. Couldn't do anything. Uh, we were going to have a dialogue line saying that, oh no, this door is locked. But uh, I forgot to request that from Alessandra. So that was uh, just some poor planning on my end of the things. So now we have the key and we can click on the door. Now we are in the final room. So I'm gonna save the endings for you guys to try out on your own, but I'll 
sounds like the last letter. The misdeeds of us all. What have we done? This stone, it only caused a blindness to what is really going on. We ignored our problems instead of fixing them. I just wish I had a little more time. Maybe. Just maybe. So something else you might notice is this room here is the only one that doesn't have like a beauty and like ugly side of things. It's just straight up ugly. Uh, so this was intentional. We wanted to say, hey, you're, you ended the game. This is truly what it is. This, this is what your world really is. This is supposed to be a machine? So this is, we just called it the Virtue Stone in the storyline. It could be whatever you really want it to be, but it's creating the beautiful world around everyone by putting everyone in a euphoric state. So that's the main plot of the game, and I hope you guys try it out, get all the different endings for yourself. I hope you enjoy the music, and you get some cool little music at the end for doing different endings, so I, I really do believe it's worthwhile trying it out. So I'm going to hit escape, and that's another nice thing that I think we added was you can hit escape any time in the game, it brings up a want to quit menu, so this way you have easy access to getting out of the game if you don't like it or you have to leave or whatever. So just hit yes, now we're out of the game. So. Out of all that, there are things that, yes, we didn't get done. We really wanted to get done. Uh, there were a few buggy things like the sprite not working correctly. Sometimes the trigger zones would stay for some of the dialogue that shouldn't be there. And that's just one of those things where it was missed in the coding phase and majority of the code was written on the last day and a half. So it was just a really big crunch time in the last point of time. Uh, so again, I just missed things. That was on my end, just uh, issues. But I believe overall the atmosphere, the mystery of the story, uh, which I honestly am going to put the whole story up. Um, I want to put it in like a devlog or maybe something on itch. I got to figure out how to do that first. But with that in mind, I'm going to get to the post-mortem side of things, I guess. So just kind of walking through what the idea was, how we created it, where we got to uh, figuring like the storyboard and stuff like that. So we had a couple ideas. Uh, I had an idea stuck in my head pretty much as soon as I heard Mask the Truth. I wanted to use sprite masking. And I really like the game Fatal Frame, so I kind of wanted to mix the two together. Uh, so came up with the idea here. We had a discussion with multiple people. We originally had a few other people on our team. They had to back out, sadly. They weren't able to really contribute at that time when they joined in. So we had about a day or two, or I guess mainly a day, where just didn't get any any real work done except for the game idea and also the story and the storyboard. So that's what that time was used for. Again, it would have been nice if I would have communicated with more people before the game jam started, but I didn't find out the game jam was starting until it was like 30 minutes before it started. So I tried to build a team real quick and that led to a few issues at the beginning, but ultimately it led to meeting some really great people and that were very, very talented. So in the end, I believe it worked out for the best. So we just kind of set up this format of how we wanted to give our ideas. And this is the one that I said, through the lens, work in progress title. We ended up sticking with it. Uh, the gameplay is going to be point and click puzzle solving. Originally, we were going to do uh, like 2D uh, fatal frame style game but did not end up working out doing that. So we switched over, switched our gears to point and click and puzzle solving, which I believe worked out for the best for us. Genre, we knew right away we wanted like a horror slash action-y, mystery uh, type game. Art style, we wanted anime-ish, uh, comic style, and 
obviously heavily referenced Fatal Frame, Silent Hill, Resident Evil, all that kind of stuff. Main hook, we knew right away we wanted the camera from like a dead grandfather, inherited this special ability pretty much. And then we knew right away, look through the lens to unmask the truth, come to my mansion and help stop the global blindness. So that was kind of the concept right off the bat, what we wanted to go with. So we just had a small little story here a teenage girl gets a camera from dead grandfather go to the mansion figure out what's going on why everything is actually broken down and terrifying uh and then you just kind of solve puzzles and try to figure out what's going on so that's how we created the game idea uh that's just the credits of everyone again and then Here's the storyboarding. Uh, so our art team had a decent idea of like what kind of aesthetic they wanted to go with, but they wanted a direction of what the world was gonna look like. And instead of relying on someone to come up with this idea and base puzzles around it, uh, I created a storyboard with the puzzle elements already into the story. That way they could just work and incorporate everything in as they were creating their art assets. So here you can see just a rough sketch of the front of the mansion, uh, dog animation. It's going to end up being dead with the key. This was, was supposed to be the intro scene. Uh, you could tell that it ended up slightly different. We had the camera with the letter. Uh, so no hands or nothing, but still worked out in our favor. Uh, da, da, da. That was the inside of the mansion. Uh, I mean, <laughs> very, very rough sketch, and you ended up seeing the final product, which was just amazing. Uh, here's the little hallway room. You can see that this was supposed to be an enemy, but we ended up changing it to that jump scare. Uh, the door on the left has no access ever. It was going to be a keypad that you had to use the code on. And this door is already unlocked, so that's the little side room. This was going to be the computer screen. This was supposed to be the perspective. We ended up altering it a little bit to match the art style better. Uh, we knew the bookcase was going to move, all that good stuff. And this was going to be the keypad, just a three-digit code that you had to enter. It was going to be random every time. Didn't get to do that. This was what the computer screen was going to look like. You had to click on a a document that said definitely not passcode or something like that just a silly name and it would tell you what the three code three digit code was and then we had the laboratory drawn up uh, we knew there was going to be a box in there with a head in it with a with, with one of the jewels uh, we had the hangman drawn into the main area had the drawer with the dead guy hanging over it with the jewel, the ability to go up the stairs, cut the rope. So we had pretty much everything set up and ready to go in the storyboard by the second day that the game jam started. So the art team really had a very solid structure to go off of, which I think that was one of our strongest suits in this game was having a direction to go and being organized right off the bat. Yeah, technically not right off the bat since we lost the first day and a half, but once we had a team together that actually was going to stay and stick together, we really had a direction and really knew how to get going. So then there's the whole story, which there was quite a bit, quite long, so I'm gonna post gonna try to post that in itch somehow. And then I also wrote multiple endings and then requested voice lines pretty much last day and said, please, can you make someone make this and we can try to put it in. And again, I just tried to say what the line is and say how it should have been done. That way they had an idea of how to actually react when they're doing their voicing instead of just being monotone the entire time, which I believe they nailed this completely. Some of them, I didn't give them a direction. They still knew what they needed to do. So 
with this all being said and done, uh, what could have done, been done better? Honestly, uh, just finding uh, the team beforehand would have really helped give us that little bit of extra time to get the polish in. At first, it felt like we overscoped, which was the case. We did overscope, but we knew how to rein that back in, so I believe that was one of the things that we did right. We brought it back down to a realistic level and was able to complete it. Uh, I would say one of the best aspects of this game jam was just this team in general. Everyone that I worked with this time was just phenomenal. Everyone was, and they're very, very talented. So these are the kind of people that you want to work with. And I'm just going to say that if you have someone, some kind of commission work or whatever, I'm sure these guys would be willing to help you out. So definitely check them out. Check out their sound clouds, their art stations, all of that. Definitely do that. Uh, and at the end of the day, I'd say this is, has been one of my favorite projects overall. I, I believe the final product just came out very well polished, felt very intuitive. Uh, I'm also just a huge fan of point and click adventure games anyway, so <laughs> that just was right up my alley for what this game needed to be. I really wanted to add more of the story elements to it. But sadly, we had to cut some of that. Uh, but I think overall, that's just how it goes with game jams. You get a week or two days or whatever you really need. And for me, I work full time. So over half of my day was spent working. And I have a family. So then I have a couple hours of that. And then try to stay up till God knows when to try to put some hours into the game and actually get something done. So that was a full week's worth of that and I just did a game jam right before that so I was already burning candle at both ends and I mean even though I was tired and felt burnt out I still think this game just had enough juice in it to really make me feel like this was worthwhile and made me enjoy every single, every single moment of it so even the crunch time I didn't even feel stressed because the final product, even if it wasn't completely polished at the end, I, I knew it was just something that I was proud of and proud to be part of. So at the end of the day, I'd say this was one experience that I'll never forget, and I'm happy that I did it. So I hope you guys have a good one. I hope you learned something, and I hope uh, that this was uh, worthwhile to watch. Sorry for the time limit hitting 30 minutes, but had a lot to talk about and a lot to review. So thanks for, thanks for watching, guys.